and welcome to another episode of Life is Spiritual Presents. Today we are exposing witchcraft, the operations of the kingdom of darkness. Thank you for joining us. I am Bamboo, also known as Tim, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Erica. Yes, viewers, once again, we are so honored to share uh, what, what we feel led to share by God and exposing witchcraft. Um, and before we start, I just want to, to encourage you to like, comment, because we always look forward to hearing from you. Uh, share, subscribe, and let us uh, be able to spread the word of God together. Yes, um, I just want to take this opportunity to remind you that out there, there are con men that may try to use my image or his image on social media to ask you for money and mm. those people who know us very well know that that is not how we serve God we don't ask for money for any prayers or anything or you know and for those of you who want to support our charity uh, programs you can visit our website which is www.lifespiritual.org my Facebook account Erica Belinda Ministries was hacked so anyone who is interacting with anybody on that platform you're doing it at your own risk. I'm on Erica Mkisa's testimonies and he's on Life is Spiritual page. So those are our pages mm -hmm. and we do not ask for money on any of our pages. Yes, we just update you on our ministry. Mm -hmm. So today we feel led to talk about witchcraft. Generally, witchcraft in the world and also witchcraft in the church because mm -hmm. the enemy has attacked the church. Amen. Yeah, but the Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Satan is defeated regardless of what he does. The church is going to prevail against the wicked one. Amen. Yeah. So before we begin, let's start with a word of prayer. This is a delicate issue mm. that should be handled uh, under the leading of the Holy Ghost. So mm. wonderful Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word, your will to speak the mind of God, to introduce your counsel and to expose the enemy because Ephesians 5 says we should not have anything to do with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them. Mm. So Heavenly Father, as we expose these things, we pray for the leading of your Holy Spirit. We apply the blood of Jesus upon our listeners, spirit, soul and body, their families, their businesses, their jobs, everything that has anything to do with them whatsoever. Pray for the leading of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord Jesus may be glorified and that the enemy may be exposed and put to shame and that your people may be set free, that they may live lives that are pleasing in your sight in these last days. We honor you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. So, um, witchcraft, I believe it showed up in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis. I strongly believe that in the beginning when God commanded Adam not to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mm. that is what that tree was. Mm. It was an, a philosophy, a way of life. It was something that God did not want mankind to have anything to do with. Mm -hmm. And we can see that the result of Adam eating of that fruit was what we is everything we see today in life in society in in America in Europe in cultures all over the world where witchcraft and sorcery abound in other words mm -hmm. the system of this world was the, was manifested from a man one man partaking in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and that's mm -hmm. why you see that same symbolism in the yin and the yang, the black and white checkered board or mm. checkered floor, you know, you see that same symbolism in on chess chess boards or ch uh, checkerboard, mm. um, positive and negative. We see that same dichotomy in uh, parliament buildings or in uh, like the U.S. Congress. There's the Democrats versus the Republican. There's that dichotomy it's this versus that it's red versus blue it's it's the crips versus the blood so what did what 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 did we see in the garden of eden that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, evil. it was witchcraft it was 
in its truest sense, it was Freemasonry, which is witchcraft. Mm. And so um, in the West, in the Western cultures of the world, America, UK, the primary religion, to be perfectly honest, and we don't want people from, you know, US or UK to be offended at this, but it's, it is important that we be honest and expose the God of this world, mm. who is Lucifer, whose name used to be Lucifer, is Satan now. He's in a fallen state. But the systems of those governments or the systems of those nations were founded in Freemasonry. Mm. And the essence, the systems of Freemasonry is witchcraft. And the result of witchcraft or the MO, the modus operandi of witchcraft, what it leaves in its wake is slavery, destiny derailment, oppression, and the thief comes not for to steal, steal to kill, kill and, and to, to destroy. destroy. Okay. Hmm. Now, when God wanted to recreate the earth, because in the beginning, we see that in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then God begins to command and say, replenish. Things like replenish, refill. Like, in other words, it's not the first time that the earth had been plenished. Mm. He was saying, replenish. That means to fill again. That means that in between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 2, verse 2, there was a great deal of time. It appears that there was people that were living at that time. There was a civilization, and it appears that God destroyed that civilization. Let's just read it. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then verse 2, the Bible says, And the earth was without form and void. void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, so between verse 1 and verse 2, there's a great deal of time, and there's an entire civilization. Because, yes, God had created the earth, but there was a form of man that was not Adam. Before Adam, there was a, a different kind of human beings that were not created in the image and the likeness of God. And God destroyed that civilization and we know that he destroyed it because in jeremiah chapter 4 jeremiah the prophet is speaking about what took place at that time and after god destroyed it the bible says that there was no longer any man there were no longer any birds flying through the air there was no longer any cities and this is before adam so clearly god must have destroyed or judged that civilization and what happened to that civilization they must have turned their backs on God and became evil. Okay, mm. if they became evil through idolatry and witchcraft, God judged them, just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. So he destroyed that civilization. And that, that's how we come to verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. Mm. So the earth was without form and void because God had judged that previous civilization and annihilated it. And now darkness was upon the face of the deep. So what dwells in darkness? Hmm. Evil, evil spirits. Okay. So there were evil spirits all over the earth at that time. And the waters were covering the earth. There was no dry land. The whole earth was covered in water and in darkness. Okay. Hmm. So those evil spirits were dwelling there. And obviously they were, they were all over the earth. They must have been the disembodied spirits that had been destroyed by the time they, they had bodies, but when God destroyed the earth, then they became disembodied yes, spirits, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, here is God saying, let us make man in our image. So this time, it's like he was having a discussion. And because God is so great, he speaks of himself even in plural. Mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, and mm -hmm. God the Holy Spirit. So he said, let us make man in our image. image. Yeah, this time. So, because this time, if we create them in our image and in our likeness, surely they will represent our interests as mm. opposed to going astray and doing that which is not pleasing in my sight. Mm. So, he decided to create Adam and puts him in the garden. 
And then he commands him, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, and have dominion. Mm. So Adam, his job was to replicate God's heavenly structure on the earth. And as he continued to multiply, he would fill the earth. And it's almost like there would be a takeover, a gradual takeover of the earth with the kingdom of God, because Adam, who was God's representative, was going to be fruitful mm -hmm. and multiply and replenish the earth and fill the earth with the image and the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now Satan sees that, hey, the earth is going to be filled with the image and the likeness of God. And that means that his kingdom is going to be destroyed. If, mm -hmm. if, if Adam mass produces, if he reproduces, I mean, not mass produces, but if he reproduces mm -hmm. himself, he's going to reproduce the image and the likeness of God, God. and eventually fill the earth. Mm -hmm. So that was going to push Satan's kingdom out, out of existence. It's like, it's almost like God put a cancer <laughs> that would destroy Satan. It's like a cancer in a in a or a tumor in his brain you know that would grow and eventually destroy him but mm -hmm. i don't want to call adam a cancer but you can understand how satan looks like mm -hmm. he looks at a human being like a cancer his enemy. like his worst enemy he hates because, humanity yeah because you are the ones who were put into the earth to destroy him. to destroy me and so satan is determined to destroy mankind he is focused and determined to use every means necessary. So his strategy was mm. to approach the woman mm. and deceive. to deceive the woman and rearrange the order because it is the man who is supposed to lead mm. because God gave the instructions to the man. And it's mm. the man who's supposed to lead and be a covering for his wife and love his wife and cover and teach his wife the word of God. Mm. So now... Instead of the man leading, it was the woman who was leading, saying, let us eat of this tree that God has commanded us not, not to, to eat, eat of. Now, instead of Adam saying, no, my wife, God has commanded us not to eat of this tree. Hmm. Adam decided, okay, my wife, let's go ahead and eat of it. Now, I'm sure it didn't happen just like that, you know. Hmm. It was over time. Eve kept on mentioning that tree, <laughs> and I'm sure Adam, over some over time, he finally got worn down and said, "Okay, okay, let's try it." I mean, what might what what what's the worst that could happen? Whoa, well, the worst that could happen is what we see now in the world: <laughs> rebellion against God on a massive scale. Oh no, it's terrible. But the thing is, that tree that they partook of was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil mm -hmm. and i believe that that tree had fruit and the fruit of that tree it might may or may not have been like a fruit that you actually eat it may have been a deed like um in the bible uh it speak in the book of proverbs it speaks of the adulterous woman who partakes of the fruit of adultery and covers her mouth as if she has not eaten mm -hmm. so it could have been a deed especially a sexual deed because the result was that they covered their private parts afterwards. Like in, in Hollywood, there is a tree where they go to perform rituals yes. so that they can become uh, wealthy and successful. Yeah, so that, that tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. evil. That means it was a tree of sorcery mm -hmm. and of witchcraft. It was the knowledge of how to utilize sorcery and witchcraft. And that is an area of operation which God did not ever intend for man to be involved in. Mm. But once he took of that tree, his eyes became aware. And that means that it's almost as if that eye that you speak of, the, mm. that third the eye, eye that man is not supposed to participate in, that but eye was suddenly opened. You and hear pastors, uh, some, some false prophets talking about opening of the third eye. Yeah, you're not supposed to open that eye at all. You're not supposed to. And and, you know, that represents an infiltration of witchcraft. of witchcraft into the church. So it is very important that we understand what witchcraft is, how it appears, how it presents itself, 
why God hates it, what God has to say about it in his word. Mm -hmm. And now that we know where it came from in the beginning, when Adam partook of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's why you see in Masonic temples, they'll have the checkered floor. Mm -hmm. So it's good and evil, evil. it's black and, and white. white. So it's some good and some evil. And they claim that, you know, you're supposed to have balance. You know, your life can't be all good. It has some bad and has some good. No, no, no. Those are doctrines of devils. Blue and red. Yes, the and blue and red dichotomies, the Republican versus Democratic. And mm -hmm. I'm with these guys or this is the, the ruling party. And then there's the opposition. This, these are dichotomies that do not exist in heaven. In heaven, mm -hmm. there is no opposition. Those two, there's only God. <laughs> yeah, those two colors also symbolize uh, red, symbolizing uh, hot burning mm -hmm. and then a uh, blue symbolizing ice. ice so jesus says tells us that there are some people who are neither cold mm -hmm. nor warm mm -hmm. you have to either be cold mm -hmm. and you have to either be warm yes so you cannot be both you cannot be both yes so he speaks against being this and that he just says be godly mm -hmm. be on fire mm -hmm. for god i would rather that you were on fire i would rather that you were hot or cold but since you are lukewarm i will spew you out of my mouth mm. so it, we before you got it 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 uh it reminds me of uh, what we saw during the the uh in, is it inauguration of uh is it president trump yes w yes where Ob o o o obama and michelle were dressed in red yes. and blue and, and trump and his wife we're all dressed in red and blue. Yeah. And it was no, the, not They had blue ties. Yeah, yeah blue Trump, ties. Trump and Obama had, uh, you know, Trump had a red tie. Obama had a blue one. Mm. And then... Michelle had yeah. a red dress. Yeah. And Trump's wife had, had a, blue a blue dress. dress. So why yeah. is this blue and red dichotomy all through, um, you know, of course, that was because, you know, Trump's a Republican and, and uh, Obama was a Democrat. But still, there's that dichotomy. There's that yin and the yang which is very dangerous it's, mm -hmm. and it is it is the system of this world is the system of witchcraft and mm -hmm. god hates witchcraft and he speaks against it in deuteronomy chapter 18 from mm -hmm. verse 9 and 10 he warns his children the children of israel when you are come into the land which the lord your god gives you you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations there shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire mm -hmm. or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Mm -hmm. So God hates those practices. He calls them abominations in his sight because witchcraft in its true essence is it is counterfeit spiritual authority counterfeit spiritual authority it is man trespassing into spiritual activities where he has no business that's why jesus said it is a thief and a robber that comes through the window or comes through the back door but the porter the the good man comes through the front door does things the right way and that's why he said i am the way in other words, I am the way to all spiritual activity. I am the way to all spiritual authority. I am the way to all spiritual dominion and power. And whatever it is you need from the realm of the spirit, it has to be through me. I'm the right way. Now, if they choose, if any man chooses not to tap into spiritual authority or spiritual power through Jesus Christ, then that means he has chosen another way which means that he's a thief and a robber. He has chosen to take a path that is not prescribed in the word of God, that is not through Christ. He has chosen to take another path. He has chosen to take the path of witchcraft, sorcery, and that's why witches are so secretive. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that witches are, they are secretive. And if you, can, if you look at a lot of uh, celebrities, yes. they pose... Um, you'll see a lot of masons posing like this putting the hand inside here others pose like this uh, putting yeah. a finger on their mouth and with a word with a word like Shh. no no, no. This, this this symbol here is called um it's called the hidden hand mm. or 
the master of the second veil mm -hmm. the hidden hand or the master of the second veil and it's a very common masonic symbol now in mm -hmm. freemasonry they speak through symbolism so you might see somebody saying this a lot of celebrities pose like this mm. Shh, that means to keep quiet even tattoos on their fingers with s h h, -H. yeah yeah yes yes we saw that on some certain celebrities yeah, we'll show yeah. them but this is the order of this of the hidden um of this the master of the second veil so he's he's telling you who he is and what he represents through symbolism mm. through certain poses that they do and they and they're telling you that and they'll pose like that in pictures because in Freemasonry they speak through symbolism and so you will see Freemasonic symbols in different areas and it's important that the church know which symbols those are so that when you see them I mean you go to certain churches and these churches have these Freemasonic symbols mm -hmm. it's like we have no business with Freemasonry we have no business with Eastern Star, which is the female side of Freemasonry. The symbol of the eye. Yes. The, the, the symbol, you know, if mm. you've ever seen this kind of symbol, them holding uh, one of their eyes. There, there are so many symbols that they use, and all these symbols have meaning. Other, uh, in some other uh, photos, you see them raising their own symbol, you know, uh, and all these things they are not just like pauses because they have an effect on, on on the person who's watching and also the person who's making those symbols so in some places people go to like these satanic concerts people are initiated people are sacrificed people end up dying prematurely others are initiated generations are destroyed but for lack of knowledge you know the bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge yes yeah so the result Wherever you see witchcraft, sorcery, the result is almost always slavery. Mm -hmm. I won't even say almost. It is always. Because Satan will never give you anything that will make you whatever God made you to be. Mm -hmm. He will always make you his slave. That mm -hmm. is definite. He does not have any other way of operating. He does not have any other mentality. Mm -hmm. his, his mentality is enslavement. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look on... United States currency, if you look on, for instance, this $1 bill, mm. it is filled with satanic and witchcraft imagery and symbolism. It is, it is awash with witchcraft symbolism. Mm. It is pure witchcraft. It has, there is nothing to do with God on any of this currency. Now, I'm not saying that people should not use you know, American money or that you should not use dollars, that's foolishness. But what I'm telling you is that they have it, they have their system of Freemasonry enshrined in their currency. And they are telling you who they are and what they represent. They are telling you who their God is. But because you don't speak this language of symbolism, you cannot possibly understand. Mm -hmm. You were taught A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They were taught pyramids. They were taught to speak in Latin. They were taught what the, this is not even an eagle. It's a, it's a, it's a phoenix. Um, they were taught how to communicate to one another through symbols because of what God did to the people during Nimrod's time. They were building a tower. They said, come, let us build a tower and let it reach into the heavens, lest we be scattered upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And so the men, they all came together and decided to build a tower. And God came down to see what these people had decided to do. Mm -hmm. And as far as he was concerned, they had already built it. Because all men had come together, all these people had come together. And with one mind, they had decided to build a tower. And God said, now nothing will be able to stop them. Because this thing, they have already imagined to do it. Mm -hmm. So he decided to mix up their languages. Well, ever since he mixed up their languages, they decided that they would no longer speak or you mainly communi communicate through languages. They would communicate through occult Symbol. symbolism. So since that time, those days of Nimrod, where Nimrod himself was an agent of the kingdom of darkness, he decided to be a man of witchcraft and sorcery, marrying his own mother hmm. and having a child, you know, so... It's happening 
the wickedness is is now happening these days you see mm. women sleeping with dogs yeah. uh, there is pornography everywhere uh, so much the things that we used to look at as abominations uh, now becoming normal because they are they are parading them on social media, on our TV stations, through these celebrities, these so-called people that people um, look at and see as if they are successful. Yeah, they have sold their souls to the devil. Homosexuality now is not something new because they are making, it, they are normalizing it and they are teaching children in schools. They are teaching them through cartoons. There's so much activity going on in the kingdom of darkness. And we are telling you this so that the church can wake up so that you wake up and begin to teach your children the ways of the Lord. Teach them what is good and let them know what is bad so that they avoid going against the will of God. We are so busy looking for money, forgetting that we are losing a generation. So church, we have to wake up. I believe that by listening to what we are sharing, you're learning something. It's not just for you, know, you to just uh, listen and just uh, after watching, you just turn the video on but do something because we are losing generations we are losing yeah so um the symbolism here is mm. speaking and it's saying a lot mm. first of all there's a symbol here um and you know we have touched on this before but we never really got into some of the details so it's important to see because mm. the whole world is work is basically working um mm. to earn when they go to work they are going to earn money Okay, mm. so it is important that we learn about this and, you know, people have gone to school so that they can learn how to eventually provide for their own families. But mm. at no school will they ever teach you what is written here, what is inscribed here, what do these symbols mean, what do they mm. represent and to whom are they communicating. Mm. So, and why, you know, why won't you ask the question? I mean, let's say you're an economist, you teach economics. But mm. you don't know any of the symbolisms, what exactly. these mean on the dollar bills. But yet you teach about money, but you don't know about money. So, you know, and you can't explain what this is that has enslaved the entire world. Mm. All right. So um, what we see here is a, is, a, is a pyramid. It says Anuit Coptis above this pyramid. And we'll zoom it in a little bit so, mm. that, so that you can see it. But above the pyramid, it says Anuit Coptis, which is Latin. It means he is pleased with our progress thus mm. far. So he is pleased with our progress thus far. And at the bottom of the pyramid, as you can see down here, it mm. says Novus Ordo Seclorum, mm. which is Latin. It means new mm. secular mm. order or mm. new world mm. order. So what are they saying? They are saying that their God, which is the God of that pyramid, and the pyramid we know is an altar, okay? Uh, God commanded, uh, in, in, in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, God commanded Moses and he said, When you make an altar unto me, you shall not make it with stairs. I saw one prophet talking about how the pyramid was an, was an altar of the Lord. And I said, this is such ignorance. This is what happens when people don't read their Bibles. And they begin to assume that this is the power of God. This has nothing to do with God. Okay? God said, you shall not build an altar unto me with stairs, lest you expose your nakedness thereon. And mm. we'll post that scripture there so that you can see it. It's in Exodus and, 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 and uh, the last verse. So, he said, you shall not build an altar unto me having stairs. Can you see that this altar has stairs? That's what the mm. pyramid is. It is an altar. It is an altar and the throne of Lucifer. In fact, when, when Erica went to hell, when she was taken there the first time, Lucifer was sitting on top, on top of, of the, the pyramid. Of the pyramid. He was sitting right on top of that pyramid, on his throne, devouring and flesh and, and drinking blood, because that's what he does. That's how they feed in that kingdom. Mm. They feed on humanity. Mm. That's how they replenish themselves. They have to eat. But God does not supply them with food because a kingdom divided against itself will fall. Mm. So how do they survive? They feed on humanity. Mm. Humanity is literally being farmed by animals. And, and the only way out is the gospel. So this is real. 
they, they, they create viruses, they create bacteria, they send them to humanity, and then they come up with solutions. They make a lot of money from humanity. They enslave people. So you work so hard, and after you have gotten to the top, you fall sick. The doctor says you have cancer, God forbid. And then once you go to hospital, their medicine is so expensive. You end up selling all your investment to treat that incurable sickness. So, so it's one and, step forward and ten steps back. Yes. Yeah, that is, and that is the system of slavery, the system of good and evil. Mm. Like you can see it at work. Well, mm. what is a what is an Egyptian pyramid doing on an all-American U.S. one-dollar bill? <laughs> are there pyramids in America? No. Where are the pyramids? They're in Egypt. What took place in Egypt? Well, in Egypt, the children of Israel were slaves unto Pharaoh for 400 plus years. And God raised up a prophet, Moses, to set his people free. So, what is a pyramid, an Egyptian pyramid, doing on an American, American $1 bill? That means that America is functioning in the spirit, the image, the likeness of Pharaoh and the spirit of Egypt is what America is functioning with. And here's another thing that is just like what took place in Egypt. They enslaved the children of Israel for 400 years in Africa's Egypt. And even in America, they enslaved black people for 400 years, 400 plus years. So we're seeing parallels here. We're seeing a repeat. Mm. So we are seeing that that system in America is a spirit. It's a system of slavery. And, I, and we already mentioned this. Mm. Wherever you see witchcraft, sorcery, you will see slavery. Mm. Okay. So we know that, you know, when people try to tell us that, uh, you know, America was founded and we love America. Some, some of my family members are Americans. I've lived there. We've we, we, we have, we have friends so America, many friends there, so yes. Much. So, mm -hmm. but it is important that we know because this system is dominating the whole world. It's not just about America. It's about the whole world. Hmm. All right. Even so, the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this thing has infiltrated the church. And this is exactly what we're discussing. One Infil religion. Infiltration of witchcraft into the church. Mm -hmm. So, so um, this symbol is representing um, the system of witchcraft and sorcery and mm. enslavement of peoples mm. and so Anuit Coptis he is pleased who is pleased Lucifer Lucifer is their God Lucifer is pleased with their progress thus far of creating a new secular order, order. or an, a world where there is no religion uh, is your pastor involved in the interreligious council Mm. Does he believe in all religions coming together and worshipping one God? Is he involved? Does mm. he go to the Pope? Does he bow down to the Pope? Those are the signs Does of... Does he take selfies with the Pope? With the Pope. Mm. Those are the signs. Uh, is that pastor being supported by people who believe in the New World Order agenda like Oprah Winifrey? Does mm. he host such people in your church? Those are the signs for you to know that I am in the wrong place and I need to seek God for myself, you know? Salvation is personal. If you're following any man or woman of God, you may end up getting disappointed. Seek God on your own. You get the Bible, start reading the Bible for yourself, start praying, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Even when you listen to uh, different ministers preaching, listen to them with a sober mind. Do not be taken by every doctrine that comes because the enemy is so cunning, you know. He, he's, he has entered the church and right now they are working towards building a one world religion. Actually, so everybody who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ and is, is not serving him, mm. by default, you are serving Lucifer because you have to work. You have to go, you have to make a living. So you're caught in this trap. There is no gray area. You are caught. You are in this. You are in this battle. You are in this war, whether you like it or not. 
even if you say I choose not to be involved, that is also a decision. Mm -hmm. And that is a decision for the devil. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Matthew 12, he says, he that is not for me is against me. And he that does not gather with me mm -hmm. scatters abroad. Mm -hmm. So he does not leave any wiggle room. He, mm -hmm. Those are, those are very direct words that draw a clear line between those that belong to him and those, and those that do not. So, are you aware that some pastors use magic wands in churches? Yes, in fact, we'll raising post, magic wands we'll post that and picture. telling people to focus on the magic wand mm -hmm. and pray and say whatever prayer they have to say. Mm -hmm. And also, you see these uh, so-called bishops, some of them uh, holding uh, swords that belong to the occult like to the Freemason. So you see them holding those uh, swords that have satanic symbols, the compass, it, it has all so, those symbols, you know, and the, compass when, and the, square. Y and the yes. square. And then mm -hmm. when you look at their pulpits, the way they have been designed in shape of a pyramid, uh, and then you see their gospel is a compromised gospel, and it is a gospel that is built on enslaving people. They will tell you that if you do not give tithe, you're going to hell. Okay. If you do not give tithe, you are a robber, you are a thief. You have done this and this. Sow a seed for everything. You know, you have to sow a seed for a sacrificial seed, a thanksgiving mm -hmm. seed, a thanksgiving offering. You have to pay all sorts of of, of, of taxes just for attending a service one service and they sell things like water if you see Rice. when they are selling water to you <laughs> prayer shawls this water is connected to the marine kingdom they are just let they are, they are just taking advantage of your ignorance mm -hmm. these people are using witchcraft to pull crowds so that they can make money they are not minding about souls they are minding about how they can make money out of people's situations you know if you ever go to a pastor and you have an issue and they ask you to pay some money before they help you just run for your life just those know are, that you're witches. in a shrine it's that is how things work in a shrine nothing for free Satan does not give you anything for free but Jesus paid the price you yourself can access the throne room of God we are not here to point you to us even us you don't need to call us for your deliverance once you get this knowledge you can get into your Bible you can kneel down and pray and God can answer your prayer because what we want to do here is just to point you to God and to let you know how the kingdom of darkness operates and what God desires for us. And now when you know, the Bible says you will know the truth and the, the truth, truth will set you free. free. So is there anything that we are talking about that you're identifying yourself with? Have you been in a cult without knowing, thinking that you're in a church? It is time for you to rise up and start disconnecting yourself from those satanic altars and start seeking God for yourself and pray because the battle is ongoing. And you know, you know what? Judgment there is real. Heaven is real and hell is real. Just as like, just as we are talking about Satan, you know, and telling you that Satan is real, just know that God is real. Some, some of the things that we see happening in the church may make you think that Christianity is a scam. Well, Christianity as a religion is a scam, but salvation is not a scam. We are not here to promote religion. We are here to promote Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for you. He died on the cross for you. That is the one we are here to promote. We are here to promote the kingdom of God, not any religion, you yeah. know. So, mm. so if we look further on this, on, on the currency, mm. is like I said, it is filled with witchcraft. Mm. Every symbol here is declaring something. Mm. It is making a direct and powerful statement. Mm. Now, every symbol that you do not understand is a symbol that is passing you by. Mm -hmm. is a statement that is passing you by is a declaration about the functionalities of this world which you do not understand mm -hmm. so that shows us that hey we really need to do some catching up here we really need to do some study here we really need to do some finding out as to how this world functions and you know god himself speaks in isaiah chapter 4 verse 6 he says my people are destroyed for, for lack of, of knowledge, knowledge. And then mm -hmm. he proceeds to say, because you have rejected knowledge, mm -hmm. and I will reject you, mm -hmm. that you should not be a priest unto me. And then he says, I will also reject your children. 
Hmm. So there's people because there's people you we try to explain this to and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to talk about it. Like, oh. And so and, and so and so and so God is saying, Oh, okay, so you don't want to know? Okay. Well, I will also reject you you and your children. So God rejects those that do not want the knowledge of the truth. So hmm. but I thank God for our viewers, they want to know and people need to know these things. Now if you look on the other side, I mean on one side it has a symbol that is the they call the the great seal and they're saying that lucifer is pleased with our progress thus far mm. of building a new secular order and now you can imagine everyone who goes to work every day mm. who does not know the lord they are going to work and they are contributing each in their own unique way to the building of a worldwide tyrannical dictatorship technological dictatorship that shall be ruled by one man, the Antichrist. And that is how you see the capstone here with an eye inside of it. Mm -hmm. Well, it is separate from the pyramid. They are working on building. The pyramid represents the, all of the construction requirements mm -hmm. to create a unified world and all of the work that it is going to require in order to build a world that has be that is what it is almost and we're almost there a global village yes they are a already world, building it. yeah that's almost one that's that that is you know you can talk get on the phone you can talk to somebody in america you can talk to uh, somebody in china like you, there's there's no it's, it's almost as if the borders have been erased okay so mm -hmm. they want a one world government they want a one world oh, system religion. they you're seeing mergers and acquisitions corporations being purchased and they're all amalgamating into one mm. and once they have all come together what the bible says is that they shall give their power unto the beast in mm. other words they are going to give their power to the antichrist did you watch that video where they were talking about um israel where in Israel they want to, to build a, a chapel where the Muslims and all the other religions can go and worship the Messiah that they yes. are expecting to come. Yes, And yes. that Messiah is the Antichrist. Yes, so they are building it. It's in the process. So it's it is almost very, done. It's, it's, and it's, mm -hmm. it's very likely that we are going to see this character in our lifetimes. We'll show Your you children will definitely see him. Mm. So... You know, they are building this system. They are building the one world or everything. It's under construction. What they are building now. What is the world doing now? They are building a one world order for And the for pastors the Antichrist. are telling us to support Israel, to send our money. Yes, it, if we are sending another thing. <laughs> money to Israel, if we are sending money to Israel to help the poor and to feed the hungry and shelter the naked, I can understand. But if we are sending money to Israel to, to help them promote their agenda that of building a one world religion temple, the mm. headquarter where the Antichrist will be worshipped, then Christians and, and, think about it. And um, you know it's it's we have to we have to admit the truth here. Many churches will not tell you this, but it is important that you do know that America enslaved the children of Israel for four hundred years. In the book of Deuteronomy, after Moses left, after Moses and the children of Israel left Egypt and they traveled out of Egypt on foot, they got to a place where Moses began to prophesy to them. And in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, from verse 2 all the way to verse 14, we see a list of blessings. And Moses is prophesying to the children of Israel. He's telling them, if you will heed the commandments of Yahweh, if you will keep his commandments, and walk according to his ways and keep his statutes and his judgments then you will be blessed above all nations of the earth however if you choose to disobey his commandments then a list of curses will come upon you and that list of curses is from verse 15 all the way down to verse 68 and in verse 68 he says and the lord shall bring you into egypt egypt again all right, mm -hmm. with ships, okay, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you, meaning that no man will be able to purchase your freedom.
once you have been sold to your enemies as slaves, nobody will be able to come and pay for you to not be a slave anymore. Nobody will be able to redeem you from that slavery with physical money or with anything of, of, of any physical value. And that is exactly what happened to the children of Israel. They were collected, they were put on ships, and they were sold as slaves. So mm. if anyone does not have that biblical understanding of who the true Hebrew people are, and they were not just, not just in, uh, sent to America, but they were scattered to the four corners of the earth, according to Isaiah chapter 11, they were scattered to the four corners of the earth. So if anyone does not have an understanding of who the Hebrew people are, and who these Jewish people are, these people who call themselves Jews in yeah. Israel right now. Let's open our Bibles and see who these people in Israel really are. In the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9, Jesus is speaking and he's telling us about the last days. The book of Revelation needs to be taught. Any, any pastor who's not teaching you about the end times, not teaching you about what to expect in these last days, in these days that we're living in now, if they're not teaching you and training you how to live in these last days, they're, they're talking about miracle miracles money, and money and keys of David, traveling and all, <laughs> all of this nonsense. Like if they're not teaching you God's word, then they're doing you a serious disservice. And beware of anybody who shows themselves to be some great one that everybody has to gather to me or else they won't make it. It's just, it's just nonsense. Those prophets, Jesus is the only great one. The ones who pronounce curses on their members in case they don't do what they want them to do. Yes. Beware of such churches. So Revelation chapter 2 verse 9, Jesus is speaking and he's telling the church, he's saying, I know your works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, mm -hmm. but are the synagogue, synagogue of, of Satan. Satan. You see? So if you look closely at the symbolism of that nation, that modern day Israel nation, you see that their symbol is a hexagram. Now, if you look closely right here on the $1 bill, you'll see a hexagram above the phoenix. Mm. They want you to believe that this is an eagle, but really this is a phoenix. Because according to Masonic symbolism, it, the phoenix will rise from the ashes to fly again. Okay, mm. So above the phoenix, you can see 13 stars in the shape of a hexagram. Mm. Now, if I told you that I was going to put a hex on you, it's what am spell. I saying? That is a spell. A hexagram has six points, six sides on its inner hexagon and is made up of six triangles. Mm. That is six, six, six. Mm. Now, the word of God says, let he who has wisdom calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Now, one score is 20. So, three score is 60. So, six, six, six. And so, what you're seeing with this hexagram is the geometric representation of the beast or the spirit of Antichrist. And it is a star that is also found in Amos chapter 6. Uh, let's, let's just go there quickly. We'll just dash through a few scriptures. Um to set our premise so that you can understand exactly what we are looking at. When you're looking at this symbolism, they are telling you something and you need to understand what they are saying. Amos chapter 5 and verse 26, it says, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chiun, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. So this is the star of Moloch. So according to the word of God, do you see how the word of God is what gives us our understanding? We don't just make up any doctrine. Mm. The word of God gives us our understanding of what we are looking at. So in, the, in some churches, they say it's the star of David. They call it, yeah, the star of David. It is and not. On, you find it on Christmas trees mm -hmm. during Christmas season. Yes. Just above the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And people are singing and worshiping and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, calling it the star of David. Yes. But I look for scriptures that show me where the star of David is. I don't see any star of David. There is no star of David in the word of God. There is no star of David in the Bible. David had no star. What it really is, is the key of Solomon, or what they came to call the lost key of Solomon. Mm. And this is because when Solomon 
fell away from God by mm. taking in many wives. Mm. They began to turn his heart away from the Lord. Mm. And so the man began to, to eat, delve into to witchcraft, witchcraft and sorcery. Mm. And so this is what they call the lost key of Solomon. That same star, my grandmother used to draw it when she was conjuring a spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, that spirit would come after she has drawn a star and draw a circle around it and place some candles to control the, the energy that the spirit is going to come with and then place the sacrifice that she, she whatever sacrifice the spirits had told her to, to, pl to place for that demon, uh, to place it there and then uh, leave the sacrifice where it has been slaughtered from, let's say it's a goat, and then place the head of the goat in the center of, of the star and sing some songs to please the spirit because music is transport. Yes. yes. So if it does not transport the presence of God, it can transport the presence of, of demons. other yeah, of demons. Mm -hmm. So when they sing those songs to transport the demon and the demon comes to, to know that it has consumed the sacrifice that you have placed, you just see the head uh, the, all the flesh on that head mm. vanishing and now after a short time the demon comes meaning it has consumed the sacrifice that you have given it mm -hmm. and that demon mm -hmm. would appear both male and female it would appear like like what you like see baphomet mm -hmm. and and then it would uh, give instructions in case you, you, you needed uh, whatever you needed to do, maybe you want wealth, maybe you want you are a politician and you, you want to be successful in whatever you're doing, and maybe you want to get connections in the United Nations organization. Yeah, you know those big places. That's mm -hmm. when they would do that high-level kind of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And that is the same star. We, I, I, like, seriously, when I got saved, one of the things that almost made me to backslide mm -hmm. was some of the things, the practices that I found in the church, uh -huh. you know, I was very scared. You know, I was like, I thought this was our stuff. But now, I'm seeing our stuff in the church. So our stuff meaning the by then, witches, yes, witchcraft. witchcraft. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm seeing this star on a Christmas tree, and they are worshipping Jesus, and mm -hmm. this is the star that we are using, we were using while and, we were and conjuring the, and, a spirit. And interestingly, and I don't, I don't want to offend anybody who loves to celebrate Christmas, but that tree is the symbol of the male organ. It is a pagan symbol of the male organ. And mm -hmm. if you read Jeremiah from chap chapter 10, mm -hmm. from verse 1, God is warning us, don't be like the pagans. What do mm -hmm. they do? He explains what they do. Mm -hmm. They cut down a tree, mm -hmm. they put it in the corner, mm -hmm. they decorate the tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, and so that's he's what they do. and then they put a star on top of it, mm -hmm. and and that star is what they used to conjure spirits. It's like a portal. They used to trust. It's like a key. Let me put it mm -hmm. that way for someone who may not understand what a portal is. Mm -hmm. It's like a key that they used to unlock a certain dimension to transport a spirit from the spiritual realm mm -hmm. to the physical realm so that you can be able to see it physically and communicate. Yes. Remember, because of our bodies, we are not able to see spirits with our physical eyes. Mm -hmm. But once you do that, you're unlocking. There's something that you're doing that is against God mm -hmm. because God hates witchcraft. He does not want us to interact with those beings. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you do that, you're violating the principles of God and there are consequences. It may appear that you, a person may be successful for some time, but the Bible clearly states that the wages of sin is and, death. And then during that Christmas time, there yeah. are always Christmas songs, mm -hmm. Christmas carols, I remember when I was a kid growing up in the States, we would listen to, I mean, during the time of Christmas, oh my goodness, everybody's house was decorated. There's lights everywhere, stars, every, pentagram hmm. everywhere, hexagrams everywhere. everywhere, characters that are not living, but, you know, like Father San Christmas. like Santa, Santa, yeah, yeah, they call him Santa Claus. Now, Santa, that's just a reorganization of the word Satan, mm. okay? And now Santa they write, Claus... They move backward mm. and forth. And Santa Claus, uh, supposedly, according comes to legend, comes in the night when, you're, when the children are sleeping and he comes mm. down the chimney, he comes down the fireplace mm. into the house. Now, what did Jesus say about mm. the one who does not enter in through the, the right front room. door? Mm. He said the, th the same is a thief and a robber. All right. So mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be like, uh, you know, this guy that used to say Bah Humbug, you know, he, he hated Christmas. <laughs> he mm -hmm. was a hater. You know, they, they painted this guy who did not like Christmas. 
they painted him as an old angry man you know what i mean and that's blasphemy against god because mm -hmm. what they're doing in christmas time they are celebrating christ mass and now mm -hmm. what is mass are we catholics why are we ce celebrating mass okay mm -hmm. catholic means universal mm -hmm. that means that that which is universal is all encompassing is that prostitution. means hinduism buddhism islam uh witchcraft whatever it is you you practice it is welcome in catholicism it which is brings us universal. to the new world order still what what this uh, so-called pastors are mm. going for to the pope they are mm. going to strategize on how they can make this one world religion happen. a reality and mm -hmm. they are funding them they have a lot of money they have big churches they have tv stations they have radio stations they have influence those pastors dine with presidents because you know religion and politics and entertainment they, 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 they have like these three uh, bodies have a way of controlling masses so now those pastors that have been compromised you will see them with the presidents they will not uh, with the politicians they will not talk against the evil that is happening they will just be blessing these politicians regardless of how wicked they are and speaking good about them and getting money from these politicians and uh, 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 inviting these celebrities who have sold their souls to the devil not praying over them for deliverance but using them to influence influence these masses against this towards destruction so mm, christians so. when you're going to church okay we are the church but just in case you feel like fellowshipping be very conscious be very careful because there are some places you go to and your life instead of being blessed you come out with a curse your life is being destroyed by these occultic men and women of god so you have to be very careful who you allow to lay hands on your head. Not everyone is going to bless you. Not everyone who lays hands on your head is blessing you. Some of them are putting a hex on your head. And when you look at how they dress, there's no difference with how the Pope dresses. They have those huge things on their the meter, head. The, the hat, that hat is called the mitre, and we'll, we'll put it. We'll put we'll put a picture of it. They have but, this those and rings, that, you and know those hat, rings there. Uh, okay. And the Pope is wearing that hat, and it has a hexagram on yes, it. Yes. And yet you see the same hexagram in churches, and that yeah. either it's, it's willful. And they have the inverted either, crosses. It's either willful ignorance, mm. or it's just they are just they are really relying on the ignorance of the body of Christ mm. and but that's why God is putting out this knowledge out so there so that people know. know yes so that you are forewarned mm -hmm. don't just don't just accept it that it's a, that's the star of david they that's have the not magic the star ones. of david they yeah. have those those uh, uh, so called uh, they call it they call them sticks they are very long like and with an uh, something like uh, carved on the top and uh, yes and then those those things have symbols on them and mm -hmm. they have they have rings i'm telling you there is one bishop who almost strangled me because <laughs> this bishop i'm sorry to say but i have to say this this bishop is bo born again and uh, she was ordained so i was so excited and happy for her being a, a new christian by then i was very excited but when i saw the things that she was wearing i could not differentiate this bishop from a sorcerer mm -hmm. so the one of the things that captured my mind is the rings that they are given and this ring was dark but it it was not an innocent ring so i waited for the bishop because after they have performed their rituals i know i don't know whether rituals but okay prayers their so-called prayers but after they put their they, they go and remove their uniforms and place them aside and then they dress with they just remain with a collar and then now go and interact with other people so i went to the bishop's room i said i want to see if this ring is innocent because even me when i was serving the devil i had a satanic ring and this ring was looking exactly like the ring that i had so i went and i started praying over it i said if there is any satanic connection attached to this ring i nullify its powers by the blood of jesus before i could even finish my prayer i don't know where the bishop came from the bishop just came and said don't pay with this ring this ring is power that's when I realized that, oh my goodness, not all those ordained bishops are innocent. I think most of most them. Most of them. I think most of them are false. I think that, uh, no, 
It, I know. <laughs> the enemy has infiltrated the church. He would be a fool if he didn't. Mm. I mean, what other strategy does he have to fight against the church other than infiltrating it? The church, yes. And he's using Jesuits, Jesuits mm. from the Vatican, mm. um, from the Catholic Church. And this is why I'm, I, I marvel. How can a Christian see his pastor or see any televangelist, you know, getting very close with the Pope, taking pictures with the Pope, telling Christians that because certain laws have changed in the Catholic Church that you know, uh, there was no more need for Protestantism. There's no more need now to protest. Catholics. Now we're all Catholics again. And this, and this is just ridiculous. And this pastor is, is welcoming the Pope and speaking blessings upon the Pope and saying, we love you and we are standing with you and we are one and, and, and may the Lord continue to raise you up. And you're asking the Lord to raise up a wizard, a witch, a sorcerer, that is putting the whole world in bondage and unifying the religions of the world into a one world order under the Antichrist mm. to impose a technological dictatorship upon the whole world and mm. force the world to worship Lucifer. And you're telling <sighs> and you the know, implication is just so mind boggling, is mind blowing the extent of deception and wickedness that is taking place. And it's being allowed in the church. That's the sad, heartbreaking part During of it. During this uh, COVID season, people's eyes began to open because they realized that these so-called men of God, the way they had, uh, uh, the way they had branded themselves as healers and oh. all that, they realized it was a scam. Because if I have been branding myself as a healer, during COVID time is when the power of God has to be manifested the most. But they all went quiet. They, were, they all went in hiding. They never wanted to interact with congregations because even their churches were shut down. Because they did, like if the government was strong enough to trust the, these churches of theirs, they would have said, okay, all churches shut apart from pastor so-and-so's church because God uses him in the, in the healing, you know, in the healing area. But all these churches were shut. And then they were still asking people for money, sending numbers where they can send their tithe. People are suffering. People are going hungry. They don't have food. Other businesses are being shut down. They are not looking at that. All they care about is send your seed, send your tithe, support Israel, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. No solution to mm -hmm. people's problems. That's when you know that most of these so-called miracles, I do not say that God does not perform miracles. Most of these so-called miracles that we see on TV are staged. They buy wheelchairs. They hire people to come on those wheelchairs and to raise them up like they have walked. And then they make you believe that they are so powerful they are closer to god than you and that if you can only have connection with them through your money by sowing a seed by sowing a seed a mega seed a seed that will move the heart of god that seed if you can sow a hundred and a hundred and a hundred thousand you <laughs> so so oh my so god. moving on quickly mm. This hexagram above the phoenix mm. here, and there's a specific reason why they have shaped this phoenix the way they shaped it. Mm. And they shaped it with a banner saying, E Pluribus Unum, E Pluribus Unum, meaning, it is Latin, meaning out of many, one, or the union of many into one. So E Pluribus Union, uh, Unum. And that, that, that small banner above the wings, the, the tips of the wings of this phoenix, they are shaped like that deliberately into the shape of an eye on this side, and it's an eye on this side, and then there's a cheek, and a cheek here on the other side, and then we'll, we'll show you what the image really is, because mm. it is a fallen angel that is hidden, whose face is hidden in the symbology there. And mm. then there are 13 stars in the hexagram, okay? So, those 13 stars represent 13 families or 13 bloodlines. They call them 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. I'm not sure if they're all in the Illuminati, but I do know that they are bloodlines that are satanic. Mm. Okay, now, the bloodline that is in the center is represented by the star that is in the center, and that star is the House of Rothschild. Mm. Now, the House of Rothschild is a satanic banking family family 
that is behind worldwide Zionism. Mm. Okay, they support the system and the philosophy of worldwide Zionism. Now, Zionism is not a not the Zion of the Word of God. It's not the Zion of the Bible. It's not the Hill of Zion. It's not the Mount of Zion. It's not Mount Zion. It is Zionism, which is the synagogue of Satan, with a with a philosophy that is that is satanic. It is the spirit of Antichrist. It is the mm -hmm. system of Antichrist. It is the the group that is primarily involved in bring a, bringing about a worldwide system of the Antichrist that will be submitted unto their Messiah. The whole world will be submitted unto their Messiah. So now this house of Rothschild is responsible for the 1948 formation or, or um, occupation of what we call today's Israel mm. that took place through the workings of the house of Rothschild mm. and I need you to to do some study about this don't just take my word for it please please research, research what we're telling you this thing is there it's out in the open it's not even hidden mm. study the Balfour Declaration Balfour B-A-L-F-O-U-R Balfour Declaration it was a declaration a letter that was written to they called him Dear Lord Rothschild, and it was mm -hmm. a permission to, to occupy the land of Israel so that um, these people who had previously, they had, they had been kicked out of uh, Khazaria. Now, Khazaria is modern-day Ukraine. You see where all that conflict is taking place right now? Mm -hmm. Now, Khazaria in those days is modern-day Ukraine. Ukraine, okay? Now... In that time, in fact, Google, when you get a chance, King Bulan, King Bulan, Bulan, spelled B-U-L-A-N, King Bulan was the king of Khazaria during the 700th century, okay? Mm -hmm. So King Bulan and his Khazarian people, the kingdom of Khazar, converted to Judaism in the 700th century. They, they, they uh, in the 7th century, they converted to Judaism. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were not always uh, practicing Judaism or reading of the Torah, things like that. They were pagans. Okay, mm -hmm. their God was Moloch. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if you look closely at the house of Rothschild, their symbol is the hexagram. Mm -hmm. That symbol of 666, that geometric representation of 666, that is the hexagram. Okay, and that and the first Rothschild, uh, his name was actually Amschel. Mayor Bauer. Now he changed his last name from Bauer to Rothschild. He lived in Germany. Mm. That r name Rothschild is German. It means red shield. That red shield or that star, that hexagram is what he hung in front of his home. It was his, it was the, the symbol of his name Rothschild. Red shield, the geometric representation of the spirit of Antichrist. Mm. That's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, let's just read it to get it word for word so that we're not um, trying to create our own doctrines here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and from Revelation chapter 13, and um, from the, from the, uh, and he caused, verses 16, yes, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their red hand, or in their right hand, sorry, or in their foreheads, mm -hmm. that no man might buy or yeah. sell, save he that had the mark, and that mark is this, this one. Many think it's an RFID chip, but I'm telling you, it's this hexagram, this symbol here. That people are already used to seeing it on a sheriff's badge. Mm. They're used to seeing it during Christmas time. They're used to seeing it on money. They're used to seeing it all over on, on the flag of Israel. Mm. Okay, even on the flag of many flags around the world. Uh, the, so, and no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you see the number of his name is here. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Which man was that? Mm. Rothschild. Mm. He's talking about Rothschild. 
There's a number of a man and his number is 600, three score and six. Now we've seen world leaders and people that admire that are admired all over the world mm. taking pictures with the Rothschild family, mm. with members of the Rothschild. And when I see a man taking pictures with the Rothschild, especially supposedly a minister of the gospel, mm. taking pictures with the central bankers of the world, the satanic bloodlines that rule the world. You know who his master is. You know who his master is. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Honestly, okay. those people have money. Like they print money. They print. <laughs> this is printed. Okay, every dollar, every dollar at the, in the, uh, at the, the the Federal Reserve in the United States is a privately owned banking institution. They print this and they print as much as they want or as little as they want. And they've been demonstrating that lately, especially because their printing has gone through the roof. But every dollar that is printed is a debt and that debt must be paid with interest. So mm -hmm. let's say the interest is 10 cents. A dollar has been printed. You have to pay a dollar and 10 cents. And guess who the government has promised to pay that 10 cents? You, the consumer. And if that is taking place mm -hmm. in America, how much more is it taking place in outside Africa. of America, in Africa, and around Asia. the whole world? Okay, so this system of enslavement, the, my, the Bible says, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. And that means that if Rothschild is printing the money and lending it to government, and lending it to banks, then that means that if the borrower is servant to the lender, then the borrower, being the U.S. government, the borrower, being the people, being you and I, is servant to the lender. That means you work for Rothschild. And who is Rothschild's father? Mm -hmm. the Satan. Devil. And then also, uh, that, that, that makes us understand that even politics is influenced by, we do not choose the people in power. By the time they come to campaign, they already know who is going to win. Because it's, it, it is not us who choose. They find, they find the opposition, they find the government, and then they deceive the masses. Mm -hmm. And they sacrifice some, mem some, some, some people who do not know, who are working out of ignorance. Those who are ready to fight for politics. They end up being their sacrifice. So, uh, this, all, the, all these things of politics are a scam. Do not be deceived. They choose who is going to be in power. Mm -hmm. Because the people who are in power are not working for you, the citizens. They are working for their bosses. The Kenyan president also said that I am not working for you. I also have some bosses that I work for. When they come, I ask them to give me some money. The man was open. It was He was a very honest person. Even Museven said, said, I am not working for you. I am working for my family. And he has some bosses. They speak. They say it openly, and then people think they are just bragging, but they are speaking the truth. And mm -hmm. now I know that the Holy Spirit is also opening your eyes so that you know the world that we are living in. These things in the world are not worth fighting for. Your soul is very important. So work towards creating your relationship with God, because Jesus says that, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. We are talking basing on experience. We have been given offers personally. We have been given offers, but we have chosen to serve, to serve God because we know that all the things of this world are vanity. We are not ready to compromise our integrity, to compromise our souls because the word says that what does it, promise, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose, lose his, his soul? soul. 1 yeah. John 2, 15, mm. if you're going to make it to heaven, you must pass through this scripture. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Mm. If any man love the world, mm. the love of the Father is not in him. Mm. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the mm. lust of the eyes and the pride of life is mm. not of the Father, but is of the world. Mm. And the world passes the way, mm. it, uh, it passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God 
abides forever. And what is the will of God? That you may believe in he whom he has sent. Mm. And whom did he send? His only begotten son, son. that whosoever believes in him should not perish, mm. but have mm. everlasting mm. life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him mm. might be saved. So mm. he's telling you that everything in this world God is going to destroy it. You see this whole system, this whole world system, he's going to annihilate and he's already done it before. That's why we started with the book of Genesis. No mm. wonder the Holy Spirit had us start there. Mm. He's done it before. He has judged his creation before and annihilated them and started fresh with a whole new project. Mm. Okay. So in other words, God is saying anything that is not in Christ is getting annihilated is going to swim in the flames of the lake of fire mm. and and that's it's it's similar it's like the ark the ark was a type of christ mm. anything that is not in the ark is going to drown anything mm. that is not in christ is going to be burned mm. that's guaranteed mm. so we are going about warning all men everywhere in fear and in trembling telling them hey the time is coming the time is coming we are almost at the end now the times are getting darker. Darkness is spreading like wildfire. Hmm. People are practicing witchcraft like crazy. People hmm. are real. You see, the, the, these people are very smart. They're advertising and saying that you can become successful if you will be initiated into, you know, the Illuminati, whatever. And there's websites where you can, you know, be initiated. <laughs> and then people are doing it. And, the, and there's desperation all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, especially in, in Africa, Gosh. but not just Africa, all over poverty. the world. But wherever there's poverty, there's people who are willing and ready to give their souls in exchange for something that is so temporary. Mm -hmm. So um, so this is why we are, we are telling you these things, so that it may be revealed to you that this world system is a system of witchcraft and sorcery and so if you're going to beat the system if you're going to fight and win it is through christ and so as we continue to expose these things we uh, we are praying for our generation because times are getting it's getting worse hmm. it's getting worse it's getting darker and darker this whole thing of um of, of borders like you know you just walk from kenya to uganda and because you've crossed a certain line they tell you that uh you're now not in kenya you're in uganda and then you walk to some point and then when you get from uganda you cross a certain line they tell you you're in tanzania all these things were built for them to control us because they know that it's difficult to control like masses you know mm. so they put those boundaries to 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 control us to control our mind to that's why a kenyan will mistreat a ugandan claiming mm. that they are not citizen because you are not a citizen i'm not going to give you this service you know yet the only thing that is separating us is is just a boundary that one man just woke up and and, and put in place and said that now from here to here is kenya from here to here, it's Uganda. And then they put people to watch over their property for them on their behalf. And then they make us believe that we are independent. And yet we are not independent. If we were independent, we wouldn't be using their education system. We wouldn't be learning their history. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be, you know, we, we, we would be choosing our own presidents. And our leaders would not be taken to their courts for trials, you see? So uh, all the thing that we see in the world is not worth fighting for. Your soul is very important. Everything that we see is a lie, it's a scam. The only truth that we have is in the word of God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Everything, every other thing we see in the world is a lie. It's not what we think it is. The world is, has been programmed. People can be programmed. Now we have been programmed to believe that, you see, I am a Kenyan. And they are Ugandans. And some people feel uh, this is a Tanzanian and we are not related. Yet we are related. We have same languages. We speak Bantu language. But because the enemy uses what they call divide and rule, you find that people have been programmed to believe a lie. And they don't only lie, they use witchcraft 
to make you believe that lie. So there is a spell that has been put and placed on, on masses, people to believe, you know, all their lies. Yeah. So in Joel chapter 3, mm. um, God speaks about what he's going to do, especially for the injustices of things like what is taking place with slavery, witchcraft, which is just the systems of witchcraft of this world, the systems that have built this world, because most of the developed world was built on the back of slaves. Mm. And that means it was built by the power of witchcraft and sorcery mm. and bloodshed. So um, God's, God has said that he will ex exact vengeance because of that. And in Joel chapter 3 from verse 1, he says, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Mm. You see exactly what happened here. Yeah. What took place was the borders were created in uh, what is called the Berlin Conference. And you can Google that and just take check out what ha took place in the Berlin Conference. Mm. But the powers that rule the Western world decided to carve up uh, Africa and steal her resources and enslave her people. Mm -hmm. All right. So he says that I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there. Now, when God says he's going to plead with the nations, that means that there's going to be warfare. And that means that there's going to be judgment, okay? So mm -hmm. he's saying, I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. How did he scatter them? Slavery, mm -hmm. slave ships, mm -hmm. and parted my land. And what did they do? They have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality. A boy for a harlot. They were selling the boy as a prostitute. It was the boys that they were using for sexual favors. They were selling the boys so that they could use them. That's what they were doing with these young boys. They were they were molesting these children. These are pedophiles. These are they, they have been pedophiles for years. It has, this is not something new. They have been pedophiles for generation after generation. This is what they were doing to God's children and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. So you see those systems of slavery. And that's why I say, I keep saying, this does not match what happened to the Jewish people in, in, who are living in Israel. Number one, they were never put on ships and sold as slaves. Number two, their boys were never sold as, as harlots. They were never sold as slaves. They were never put on ships and sold as slaves. So they don't fit. So who are they? They are exactly who Jesus said they were in Revelations chapter 2, verse 9. The synagogue of Satan, posing as if they are the children of God or the children of Jacob or Israel. And he says, yea, and in verse 4, yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? And will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Why? Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Mm -hmm. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. You seeing what God is bringing down judgment upon the world for? The reason why he's judging the world. He said, Behold, I will world, raise yeah. them. He said, Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither you have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. That's what they are worried about. They are worried about the vengeance of God, that the tables will turn. Even mm. though we don't have the mind of, you know, revenge. of revenge. But the Lord is saying that He's going to exact revenge Himself. It's not us to do it, it's Him. And they are innocent people who are going to suffer because... So any, any uh, and, and now of all these Western nations, anyone who's not in Christ is going to suffer this vengeance of God because of the vast, the huge injustice that was done with slavery. And yet, you know, churches are not talking about this. It's, and yet this is right in the middle of the Bible. It's in the middle of the word of God. 
And mm. and the book of Revelation is about what God is about to do in the end times. And, the same thing and what is unfolding. taking place. Yeah, we're seeing it unfolding. And in that place, the place they call modern day Israel, they're building the temple to unite the religions of the world, to prepare the whole world to worship the, the Antichrist. Antichrist. So it is very important. You see how in Revelation chapter 13, that he causes all, small or great, rich or poor, free and bond, to receive, to receive a mark that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark upon his right hand or on his forehead, or probably on the hairline somewhere. It says that you, you cannot buy or sell without it. And so the time is coming when that thing is going to be imposed upon humanity. We're telling you now, anyone who takes that mark, the Lord God has rejected you automatically because mm -hmm. what it will do, you will have sold your soul to Lucifer and because of the nature of that mark, it will be irreversible. Mm -hmm. You'll no longer be human. And remember, Jesus died for humanity. Mm -hmm. He did not die for freaks of nature. He did not die for the image and the likeness of Satan. He mm. died to save those who had been created in the image and the likeness of God. And look, in Revelation chapter 14, he gives very clear instructions concerning those that will receive the mark of the beast. Mm. And it is scary. In verse chapter 14 of Revelation from verse 8, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And I believe that Babylon is America. That's modern day America. Uh, but it's not just America. It's also, it's also Rome, the system of Rome, which is the Vatican. That, that's the great harlot that sits upon the back of the beast. Now that harlot is Rome. And that beast is the world system, the financial system, the Rothschild financial system. So the, that Catholic church is that harlot that sits upon the back of the beast. And the beast is this financial system, okay, that mm -hmm. enslaves the whole world. So in the third, verse 9, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand. Watch this, verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Mm. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Now here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. <sighs> and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So mm. anybody who receives that mark, the wrath of God will be poured out on you and the torment that you will be forced to endure will never end. And that is because you have chosen to side with Satan and so defile the image and the likeness of God that he created you in, that that level of blasphemy mm. will be be judged with a ferocious judgment. All mm -hmm. right. So that 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 is a that is a clear and distinct warning. Do mm -hmm. not take the mark of the beast. It's coming. The, the system temptation. the system is being built. That mm -hmm. the worldwide banking system is being built. It may be coordinated with Bitcoin. We're not sure exactly how it's going to work, but we do know it's digital. It can't mm -hmm. be paper money. So we mm -hmm. know that uh, cryptocurrencies will help it work. Blockchain will help it work. Mm. So um, it is important that you understand that those systems have been created mm. by the enemy. And it's not been created by the kingdom of God. Yeah, And the temptation to, to get the mark is great. It's going to be is greater. Just like 
people were tempted to go for the vaccine you know you can see that you have to because you don't want to fall sick one secondly you want to be able to travel without restrictions you want Two, to keep your you job to keep your job mm. so there is going to be a huge or a big temptation that will lead masses to That's why compromising it's, it's better to be self employed early before mm. those days come mm. learn to be self sufficient have your land somewhere farm build farm yeah have your land somewhere learn to farm learn to live off the land get out of town yeah. as much as possible learn Prepare. to learn to live what i call off the grid mm. meaning that you are somewhere where you don't have to go to a supermarket mm. to get your food because imagine if the trucks stop running you what are you going to do starve mm -hmm. to death Mm -hmm. If you can't enter a supermarket because you have not received the mark, the mark then how will you, you buy food? Yeah. Mm. So it's important that we know, since we know these days are coming, we begin to prepare. So we've already begun. Started. Yeah. Have a place where you have land, where you are farming, where you can live off the land and mm. not have to go into anybody's city, mm. not to have to ask anybody not for anything. Rent, yeah. Not to pay rent, you yeah. know, during that time, it's dangerous if you're paying rent mm -hmm. and you, you're not working mm -hmm. and, uh, and you need to meet all these bills, you know. If you can, like, have solar system, if you can have uh, 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 underground water like boreholes, if you can create a system where you don't have to depend on anyone for anything, yeah, yourself. So... Mm. I was telling you earlier that inscribed in this symbol right here is the head, is the face and the head of a certain being. And we'll show you who that being is. But Erica was introduced to that being while she was serving in the kingdom of darkness. And that being's name was Cleo. Mm -hmm. Now, this Cleo character is in the shape of an alien. What, what we mostly... You know what Hollywood shows us uh, look an like alien. alien. Yeah. yeah, that's how he. That's what he is. And if you look here, you'll see that this is his eye on one side. This is his eye on the other side. Like there's his cheek on this side here. His other cheek here, and on his forehead here are those thirteen stars. And then he controls what they call technology. Yeah. He's very advanced. He, mm -hmm. when it comes to new things, he knows a lot and uh, many of the world leaders subscribe to him they bow to him because the, the the more influential you are in that area the more powerful you are so countries like china america you know all those superpower countries bow to this being because of the influence he has the technology the new ideas they are inventing new things they want to control yeah through internet through you know these apps some people cannot survive without Facebook, like when they are disconnected, they feel like their life has come to an end, you know? Yeah, so this thing is powerful. and So this, that being, yeah. talk about that being Cleo, mm. you know, we'll show his image. That and Cleo what, and what? is protected by, by you know, a big... <laughs> he's not just uh, he's protected by these big governments and then he has meetings with these people who print money uh, uh, that's the house of yes, Rothschild yes he has uh, meetings with them he influences banks he influences telecom companies like uh, when when I, I was not yet born again I was working for a certain telecom company by then it was called Mango and why, why I was there is to find a way of promoting the, the the company so that it can get very many customers and then also during this uh, time that people communicate they, they they use those companies as a spy network they get people's data people's information whatever uh, they get to hear all the conversations and then they can even sell that data because it's very important for governments to to have all the information about their people the people they are governing you cannot govern someone you don't know so the only way they can know about people is through these telecom companies. He was uh, also controlling the banks because they need that uh, technology to be able to make those transactions, you know, accurately without making losses and all that, you see. So uh, Cleo was working with the leaders, eh? like uh, for these big organizations like the United Nations Organization, uh, uh, Red Cross, 
all those big the the this uh the top most uh leaders were always meeting with him and banged him and the owners of companies that um manufacture things that people depend on like cars like mm. toyota wanting to get this uh sophisticated like the technology that can match to the standards that people want every day they keep creating something new something new Com uh, uh, these uh, companies that make computers, phones, every day they upgrade. Where do you think they get these ideas from? It's Look at the symbol for Apple. Yes, Apple. It is somebody who took a bite mm. of an apple. Forbidden fruit. That's the forbidden fruit. Yeah. And they're telling you straight up. And, and, and you know, we buy these products. And, and I believe that, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't use these products. You mm. just pray for these products whenever... Whenever you, whenever you're buying, and them. it's good to but know about what you, something if, that you're using. If you look on the back, mm. you can see um, Apple's symbol, and Apple happens to be the most prosperous uh, uh, company in the world, um, upwards of two trillion dollars. So, look, they are collecting your information. Everything you do on this phone, all of the data that you upload, mm. is being recorded. Hmm. It, and one day it is being stored and a profile is being made about you hmm. what you like what you don't like what kind of person you are your image your likeness your family members your known associates hmm. it is a system called prism that's what edward snowden was exposing about the nsa in the united states and he had to rush he had to go to russia because um, you know the, he had exposed the the inner workings of the NSA. <laughs> All right, he basically exposed that we're being spied on. Mm, you know, and true. so these these things they are creating a profile about you all right i know i have one i know erica has one i pray all the time mm -hmm. in fact the body of christ should pray that their data center should be deleted that mm -hmm. there should be, because god has systems also mm -hmm. yeah we're, they're not the only ones with systems and, and then we're not saying these things so, on social media yeah, yeah don't you put know, your life you bought out a there. car you place it on social media <laughs> you just got pregnant you you go on social media you're about to give birth you go on social media you're giving birth on social media you tell you know. it basically because the enemy needs information about you those mm. witches that bewitch you those people that oppose you those family members that want to be with you and they're jealous of you because they don't want you to move ahead in life they need you to post your information mm. so that they can utilize that against you but mm. big companies mm. like facebook never trust that company though we might use it for but ministry, we only for yeah, businesses we, we we put the information that we want them to have out there mm. and if you look at the symbol of uh facebook it is an f mm. that f is also the symbol of something called tubal cane t-u-b-a-l cane c-a-i-n study tubal cane find out about tubal cane it is freemasonry it is freemasonic mm. Mm, and and um, yeah, you can you can find out about that. You check out Google's uh, the symbol. Check out the symbol for for Google. Um, in fact, it's 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 here. Um, if you look at Google Chrome, you know you can zoom in on on the symbol for Google Chrome right there. And we'll post up the we'll post the um, the the close up. But mm. it's six six six. And it's also in the shape of an eye. Very clever uh, labeling. Very clever about how they, you know, they hit it. But you know, Sergey Brin, and you know, he's the, he's a billionaire now. But what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So if you look at the symbol, if you look at that Google Chrome symbol, it has six, six, six. But it cleverly hidden into a symbol, mm. uh, and cleverly hidden into a shaped in an. In an eye, now so they are. Wa they're telling you that they're watching you. Mm. They're recording all of your information. Mm -hmm. Every email you have ever sent, every picture, anything you have ever uploaded to the internet mm -hmm. has been recorded, filed, and stored. Mm. And somebody may ask, what business would Erica have with Cleo? Yeah, the business was my aunt, my auntie uh, was working for Reproductive Health. Uganda and she she was working with the World Health Organization and being there 
as a sorcerer, you're more effective for, in their kingdom. You, you, you implement everything that they tell you to do. You, you work for them. So me, the devil also wanted to work with me because they look at the generations. I was coming from a family of sorcerers. So I was the fourth generation and they had plans of working with me and giving me their secrets. So I, I, I wanted to work with the United Nations organizations and they were going to fund me because yeah, that was the plan. They were going to fund me and me, I was supposed to work uh, to, to start an NGO where I claim to help the women, the vulnerable women. Wow. But I w they were going to fund me to introduce habits like lesbianism uh, prostitution like things like that i take i pretend like i'm helping them i take them to uh, arabic countries and i sell them for prostitution i take them and introduce the, like I'm, I'm sponsoring them to go and study and then they introduce them to uh, lesbianism and then i i connect them with you know the, because they have fundings Mm -hmm. for all those projects mm -hmm. you know like uh they have their lucy trust and all those organizations that are ready to invest a lot of money so for me to be able to work with them i was also working for telecom companies and uh, because I, I i wanted to also work in these things of promotions i always had that that uh, uh you know and connections with celebrities and all that so they they saw value in me and i thank god he delivered me right now i'm doing what i'm supposed to do what happens is the enemy sees your future and he sees what god has purposed for you so he gets you and then he diverts you he he uses that thing that god has blessed in you and perverts it. and he perverts it so now i'm helping people but genuinely with no uh, strings attached i'm not selling them i'm not but i'm genuinely helping people and i genuinely have an organization where we are helping people yes so additionally i told you this thing is filled with satanic witchcraft symbolism mm. they are they are screaming whom they serve they are screaming their god at the tops of their lungs mm. and they are laughing at christians because christians cannot hear mm. they cannot see and this is those who jesus was talking about because seeing they do not see mm. hearing they do not hear mm. on the symbol this the, as you can see on the on this dollar bill here there's what looks like a shell, you know, like seashells, like, mm. you know, the, the shells that you find at the beach. Okay. These shells, they represent the marine kingdom. And the God of the marine kingdom is a God called Poseidon. Mm. Now, Poseidon um, rules over the marine kingdom and has many, there are many dynasties in that in the in the water kingdom in the marine kingdom there are many dynasties there are, there's you know that's where you get your mermaids your merman spirits those 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 evil spirits that operate in the waters yeah. and um they 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 rule over this the systems of economics okay mm -hmm. and and whenever you're talking about financial systems you always speak in what i call watery terminology you're mm -hmm. talking about float, you're talking about sales, you're talking about uh, loan sharks, you're talking about currency, you're talking about um, frozen assets, you're talking about banks, mm -hmm. like the side of the river is called the river bank, okay, the flow, flow. of currency, okay, yes, mm -hmm. whenever we're talking about, um, you're talking about pools of money, you're talking about you, you always speak about when you're talking about money, the uh, liquid assets, you are talking mm. about uh, um, liquid terminology because the marine kingdom controls finances. And it's important for you to understand this. So um, you've seen some vehicles with the sim with filled with satanic witchcraft symbolism. Mm. Like if you look at the Maserati, there's a certain car called the Maserati. The symbol of the Maserati is a trident. Mm. that's that's poseidon's trident is poseidon holds the trident mm. it's a it's, it's a three-pronged uh um it's like a it's like a staff with mm. with a, with three prongs on the top mm. and he uses that oh, for, yeah. mm, mm. for curses he uses that for for his witchcraft for his sorcery mm. so and and if you look closely on the dollar you'll see spider webs you'll mm. see a net 
Mm. Because this thing catches man. Men are caught into the into hell and pulled a into hell. Kill a brother for money. Because of money, yes. And the word of God says the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have veered away from the path. So the, it is the love of money that is the root of all evil. It's not just money, mm -hmm. but these people's money <laughs> is filled with the symbolisms of witchcraft and sorcery, and they are mm -hmm. screaming who their God is. And mm -hmm. that's why Jesus said, ye cannot serve God and mm -hmm. mammon, because to get this, to get to serve mammon is to compromise your integrity mm. so once you've compromised you are no longer serving god mm. but if you're going to serve god then you refuse to compromise your integrity mm. and that means you're no longer serving mammon mm. so learn the difference between the two mm. amen and i believe that you know um soon enough this character cleo and those are those alien be looking beings they are going to make their entrance. Yeah, the, Cleo is already here. <laughs> yes, yes, He's already they're, here. They're They've going even to make had the, interviews with him. They're yeah. going to make their entrance in the in the, in the grand stage. Mm. CNN, CNBC, mm. ABC, and they're going to start telling people how they are the ones who created humanity. Mm. And now, because they created humanity, they are the ones that have the solution for humanity's problems mm. to stop humanity's wars cures for humanity's diseases mm. and you know um solutions for worldwide poverty meanwhile they're the ones who create systems of poverty mm. they print the money they print as much as they want or as little as they want if they want to develop the whole world they can but they choose to keep some poor and those who compromise their integrity rich they have created a sorcery system of compromise that enriches the few at the expense of the many in it's, other words, it's deliberate a person who is putting their trust in the government is going to be disappointed mm. yeah because it's like you're putting your trust in man and what does the bible say about those people cursed is the man that trusts in man that makes flesh his arm mm. whose heart has departed from the lord that's a uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 5. So, yeah. It also tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and mm. lean not on your own understanding. Mm. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Yes. yes. And if you look on the dollar bill, you see George Washington. He was the first president of the United States. George Washington was not a Christian. Mm. Bible says you shall know them by and their, their fruits. fruits. This man had plenty of slaves and... He was a Freemason, and you can see him dressed in the Freemasonic Nelson garb Mandela. with with the with the apron. Nelson Mandela is another. He was a Freemason also. We call them Prince Hall Freemasons. And if we look through some of the heroes that are celebrated in Martin the United Luther States, King. I saw Martin Luther King sitting there with Nathan Rothschild. Is it Nathan or one of the Rothschilds? Mm. And I wondered what what is Martin Luther King Jr., whose real name is Michael. His real name was Michael King Jr. He, he changed it to Martin so that he can sound like Martin of Martin Luther of the Protestant Reformation. But um, I wondered, what is Martin Luther King Jr. doing with the Rothschild, the 13 Illuminati bloodline families? What is he doing with them? Why isn't he exposing them? Mm -hmm. Why isn't he saying, let us come out from among them and be separate? Why is he fighting for civil rights, meaning we want to be included we want you to accept us. What kind of, just think for yourself, what kind of people would be enslaved by their enemies and then seek to be loved and accepted by their enemies <laughs> instead of deciding to leave their enemies and be separate? What kind of thinking is that? Does that even make any sense? doesn't make any they sense. They go to our enemies for, for support. Yeah, so what, the, so what Satan wanted Satan did not want the children of Israel to leave America. He does not want them to leave mm. and be their own and, and have their own nation subject unto God. What he wants is to pull them in and have them subject unto him. So he raises up what we call house Negroes, the so-called celebrities. Even in the days of the slaves, there were always those slaves who worked in the field. Mm -hmm. And they were working hard and they ate scraps and, and their food was horrible. Their conditions were horrible. And then there was always a slave that would watch over them. Mm -hmm. That slave was closer to the slave master. And mm -hmm. 
that slave used to watch over the slaves and, and he, he was given more some offers and he was yeah he was given some offers some so he was given better food better clothing and a better lifestyle than the rest of the slaves but he was black like them and he was worse than the slaves <laughs> he, he would be worse <laughs> so so this was the house this is what they called the house the house negro now we're not talking about these things for purposes of racism because god mm -hmm. loves all people god's desire is that all should be slave i mean saved not slaves but saved for mm -hmm. all have sinned and come short of the glory mm -hmm. of god and whosoever will call upon the name of the lord shall, shall be, be saved. saved whosoever will black white yellow brown whoever Mm. But here's a house here's a house negro who's being sent to do the work on behalf of the of the of the master of the so-called master. So this is what we see with a lot of uh, with a lot of so-called heroes. Celebrities. So called celebrities. So called people, people who are following celebrities risk their lives. They don't know what they are following. Don't follow a celebrity. Follow Jesus Christ. Mm. Follow after Christ. Don't follow Jesus said. I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So if you follow after the Lord Jesus Christ himself, then you will not walk in darkness. You will not walk in ignorance, mm. but you shall have the light of life. And that level of darkness, that verse is full of meaning. Because even when you leave this body and you're ascending up to heaven, between earth and heaven, there's the first and second heaven. Mm. That area is full of darkness. Mm. So to come through that area, you need to call upon the name mm. of the Lord. And he that calls upon the, on the name of the Lord shall mm. be saved. That's the, the, the name of the Lord Jesus is your only entrance, is the way you penetrate through that first and second heaven. Otherwise, mm. you are not going to get through. So now just imagine somebody who's following a celebrity. I followed a celebrity. I ended up in hell. She, yeah, I found myself in front of Saturn. She was taken to hell by a celebrity. A celebrity. That's so, why we preach against this celebrity garbage. Because you don't know what they're doing to become a celebrity. To be a celebrity in this world, you must have the power of witchcraft. Power. You must have spiritual power. There's nobody who becomes a celebrity. There's nobody who rises. I don't care who they are. I don't care how much they look like they fought for the they're people. They're talented. I don't care how much they look like they're Mr. Pan Africa or Mr. Liberation or Mr. If they're not preaching Jesus, mm. and nowadays even if they are preaching Jesus, you see that th you see by their affiliations, their you see their fruit, you see their posing and speaking well of the Pope instead of pointing out that the Pope is a false prophet openly and saying it directly. Mm. Had I followed that path mm. before I had given my life to Christ, I would be by now I would be given awards as a, a, a woman who fights for women's rights by the, you know, these big recognized organizations. I would be now invited in different parts of the world to receive different awards and different fundings, you know, for my, for my NGO. And I would be giving powerful uh, speeches, you know, to different people. I would be meeting with the who's who's, you know. But what does it profit a man? to gain the world and lose his soul. I was not happy. People would look at me and think I was okay, but I was not okay. Without a soul, you don't have life. You're, you're being controlled, you know. Mm -hmm. You're not yourself. You cannot make your own decisions. You see those celebrities crying, you know. Some of them end up committing suicide, mm -hmm. you know. Because, like Robin Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, uh, on the outward, they are successful. But what do what is what do you define when you say someone is really successful? What is success? What is success? Success is fulfilling the will of your father. Yes. Of and your heavenly father. You do not need to sell your that soul. Is success. Jesus can make you wealthy. He can make you rich without you selling your soul. Although people do not want to take that direction because it seems to be a long process. You know, a process really, where you're being tested, where really you're being, we don't even listen with and coming to the Lord for money is the wrong reason to come to the Lord. Mm. The reason why we need to come to him is because we realize that we are sinners in need of a savior. Mm. And what he grants us is righteousness. Mm. And if he never gave us anything other than righteousness, he's done more than enough. Yeah. So he doesn't need to give us, he doesn't have to give us anything else. But, there are but his graciousness, because he's so gracious, he still blesses us. Even mm. on top of that righteousness, he still blesses us 
with mm. everything we need. And mm. and moreover, we should not even have that mindset of, mm. of you know, Lord, make me rich. Mm. That's, a, that's a wrong mi mindset because look at the early church. Look at these people like Peter who mm. were crucified for the sake of the gospel. Look at people who are ready to die for the sake of the gospel. Look at people who were cut off who were cut in pieces. Look at people, I don't know if you've seen that movie Gladiator, but the real gladiator, the real reason why they gathered in the arena, hmm. in the Colosseum, was they were throwing Christians in there, and those Christians were being devoured by lions and leopards and, and, and wild animals. And they were doing that to, to persecute Christians. And these Christians had made up in their heart and in their mind, I would rather die than the than to deny the Lord Jesus. Up to the last minute, they would tell them, are you ready to deny the Lord Jesus? Mm. And they would, and they were, in their hearts, they had decided, I would rather die than to deny him. And mm. they were taken out into the Colosseum and they would be devoured by animals. So where's, where's their riches? You know, how come they didn't, how come God didn't give them a mansion? Mm. You know, and so I think even thinking about you know, even the prosperity gospel has done us a, a, dis, a disservice. Yeah. Really, our mindset, our mindset should be this. The kingdom. I'm ready to die for this thing. The kingdom. And where we are headed, we are headed into this time of tribulation. Mm. And people tell you, and, and, and we've heard all kinds of doctrines that you're going to disappear before you go through any kind of tribulation. But what if you don't? Mm -hmm. And what if they misinterpreted the scripture? Because the word of God is very clear. Jesus is coming back one time. He's not coming back, taking the church and then going away and then coming back again. No, 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 no. He's coming back once. And when he comes, he's coming to, he's coming to, he's coming to judge everything. Mm. Jesus said, God has committed all judgment unto the son. The father has committed all judgment unto the son. So he's coming one time. And furthermore, if we, if, if we are going to tell people that they should not prepare for any kind of tribulation, it's very dangerous. Because when the time comes that people begin to get persecuted, we see the darkness is increasing. You see witchcraft is increasing. Mm. You see that the nature of the beast is increasing, that evil is increasing in the world. Mm. And the time of persecution will come mm. now. I, I would just as much as anybody would love to disappear. But I think it is much safer and much more biblical to have the mentality to be prepared for anything that happens. So that if they put a gun to your head and tell you, deny Christ, you say, no, I'm ready to die. Now, that's a real Christian. That's a real disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I think your mindset should be prepared. I am going to give my life for him. I'm ready to give my life for him. If you're not there, I'm telling you, that is the, that is the entrance to heaven. Jesus said, if any man will follow me, let him first of all deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Now, what is going to happen with that cross? That's where you're going to be nailed. That means you're giving your life for this thing. You are giving your life in exchange for his. Mm. <laughs> Christianity is not a religion. Mm. You are giving your life in exchange for his. It is an exchange that is taking place. So, if we are of that mind... Men in the Gospels, were, they were ready to die. Peter was hung, supposedly he was hung upside down. All of the, of the apostles, they were killed in horrific ways. He yeah. said, bloody, this book, it's not, it's not, it's, it didn't arrive in our hands with, uh, uh, on a silver platter. It is covered in blood. This book is covered from the blood of Jesus, from the blood of all of the prophets, to the blood of the Lord Jesus, to the blood of the apostles, to the blood of all those who died so that all these scriptures could be assembled. This book is covered in blood. The, the blood of the martyrs is a bloody, is a bloody book. Mm -hmm. So uh, even when people start talking about, you know, money or uh, prosperity, those are, those are extras. We should be ready to die for this thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, the Bible also tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And all these things shall be added unto us. Meaning, they, they, they are just like, they are not key, you know. They are not the main things we should focus on. We should focus on the kingdom and righteousness. Then these other things, when they come... They just come to simplify our work in, in spreading the gospel, in building the kingdom, 
you know, in helping people uh, see the light and know the truth and to set captives free. So go, God is faithful. He will not uh, fail to provide for you. The Bible says he will supply all of your needs, all of our needs, according to his riches in glory. So we are serving a rich God who does not want to see us suffer. But you have to be ready to go through the process. Many Christians want a shortcut. They want you to just come and prophesy and they receive. And that's it. They don't want to read the Bible. They don't want to pray. They don't want to work. That's why they will be going to church from Monday to Sunday, hoping that they will get miracle money showing up in their accounts. You know, miracle money, miracle this, miracle that. They all they just want to be to, to, to live by, you know, like when you're breastfeeding a child, it comes to a point where the child is big enough to eat. You know, so God can give you those miracles to prove to you that he's powerful and he's God and to strengthen your faith. But it's not that all the time you're going to survive on miracles. You have to learn to work and you have to learn not to compromise your integrity and you have to learn to trust God and, uh, and to also concentrate on the kingdom of God and righteousness. Yeah. So, amen. So, you know, we have much to share. I believe this will just be part one of this series. That will continue. And we will continue. Yeah. But um, we, will, we will pray for you before we go. And um, we want you to know, you know, of late, um, there have been a lot of wars against marriages. Mm. There's been a lot of wars against families. Satan hates the family. He hates marriage. Um, there's been, there's warfare against women like mm -hmm. crazy because Satan knows that he, he uses women in a unique way, in a different way than he uses men. Even at the very beginning, he used the woman to deceive or, well, to convince, I will not say deceive, to convince the man to disobey the word of God. So, you know, he has not stopped that same style of deception. And, um, you know, we know that wherever we see the order reversed, Mm -hmm. where men are no longer leading and God has placed them in that position, not to be oppressors of women, but to be leaders, to be the husband is the head of the wife because if need be, he is to die for the wife, <laughs> not, if, not to rule over her with a heavy hand and, and be a slave driver, but to love and cherish his wife as he loves his own body. So there is a fight against the marriages because that represents Christ and the church. It is a mm -hmm. mystery, but the man and the woman represents Christ and the church. So mm -hmm. Satan is doing everything in his power to, to fight that. And the system of the Antichrist is a homosexual system. Mm -hmm. And the Antichrist himself will be a homosexual. Mm -hmm. and the Bible says he has, it's as if he has no use for the woman. I believe in, it's in Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. But it, the Bible says that he, 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 uh, he has no use for he had no use for the woman. Meaning, meaning that, you know, the way in, in naturally the way that a man is with a woman, in in the book of Daniel, this this antichrist was not was not like that. He was he 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 has no use for the woman. So we know that that spirit, the spirit of this age, LGBTQ bestiality bestiality. Um, okay, of course, homosexuality, um, every kind of abomination, anything that disfigures the image and the order of God, the image and the likeness of God and the order of God. Watch closely those two because Satan seeks to rearrange those two. And wherever he can rearrange that system, he will do it because mm -hmm. he knows that if you can disfigure the image and the likeness of God, it no longer represents God. Mm. It is a representation now of the kingdom of darkness. Mm. Social media, the more naked you are, the more views you get. Uh, the more pervert you are, the more views you get. If you divorce, you'll get many fans. If you're, you're married, you not even get followers sometimes. Uh, uh, like if, if, you, if someone is uh, sleeping with a dog, they'll get relevance. They'll be talking about them on... <laughs> On Twitter, on Instagram. It's like the more absurd. So you see the absurdity, the levels of absurdity. The more absurd, the more morbid, the more twisted, the more freakish you are, the more views. 
the more attention, the more money, the more you compromise. Mm. It, it, it's as if the further you go. It's actually that, that chapter that talks about um, the, the, the Antichrist being a homosexual is in Daniel chapter 11 mm. from verse 37. Mm. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So you see, mm. the desire of women, he has no desire for women. What does that mean? He's homosexual. He loves, loves men. So that's the kind of homosexual, that, that's why they are promoting. that antichrist energy is the homosexual energy. And that's why you see, even uh, lately on Netflix, they, they've been showing the uh, young, famous, and African, or something like that, rich, famous, and African, this new, this new uh, reality series, which was garbage, but, you know, people are, people are watching it, and they're introducing a new, this, this homosexual character, mm -hmm. and, they've, and they've flooded him with money, and, uh, you know, obviously, this guy has sold his soul. <laughs> and if there's anything that's common with, homose with, with, with Freemasonry and witchcraft, it's homosexuality, Sexuality. lesbianism, Bestiality. Bestiality. Pedophile. The Pedophilia. system of the beast. The Baphomet. The male and female amalgamation. That 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 confusion. Hmm. Transsexual, binary, non-binary. All of this, all of this is it's just, you know, and people have pronouns now. You know, it's not he doesn't want to re be referred to as him mm. or her. Mm. wants to be referred to as them can you imagine so he has a pron a pronoun now and now if you don't if you don't say them to refer to this person they'll now be offended in uganda <laughs> in uganda a pastor's wife who is a gospel singer well known in our country decided to divorce the pastor to marry a fellow woman and because of that she's trending they are, they are being funded. She got citizenship in Canada, and the children are all over social media singing, you know, and uh, they are now the sweethearts of the world. So now just imagine because the, of the example. And mm. so now the young girls out there who are going through hardship in life mm. and are looking at this girl, this woman who seems to have made it, mm -hmm. and now she, they want to follow in her example. Yes, because they want to get citizenship. And the only way you can move from Africa and go to, to Canada and get citizenship without struggling is by saying that, you know, you're gay and it is against the, the tradition where, of where you're coming from. So now you're, you're seeking asylum. You're seeking asylum, mm. you know, things like that. Yeah, but at the expense of your soul, mm. I don't think they're happy because the, all those things are vanity. At the end of the day, we are all going to leave everything and we are accountable to God. Yeah, so I hope you have been blessed. Just pray with us as we pray with you. You know, I don't believe in the things of pray for me. I, I want to pray for myself. So pray with us as we pray with you and let us stand and together we shall win. Amen. Amen. So um, let's just pray and um, mm. I believe that God will... will enlighten some and deliver others mm -hmm. and bless others and strengthen us all father in the name of jesus i thank you for the gift of life for the gift of understanding for the gift of knowledge and information and counsel and wisdom and might the seven spirits of God listed in Isaiah chapter 11. We thank you, mighty Father, for every soul under the sound of my voice. I pray, mighty Father, that you surround them with a hedge of fire and a wall impenetrable on every side. Mighty Father, I pray that you deliver them from witchcraft, sorcery, every spell of the devil. We break it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We cast out any demonic spirit that has been on assignment against their lives. We destroy witchcraft. We destroy spells. We destroy charms. We destroy any word of spell that has been broken, that has been spoken over their lives. We destroy them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mighty Father, we thank you for the angel of the Lord, which encamps round about those that fear him, and the Lord delivers them. We declare there shall no evil befall them, neither shall any plague come near their dwelling, and that a thousand shall fall at their side and ten thousand at their right hand, but it shall not come near them. Only with their eyes will they see and behold the reward of the wicked. 
I thank you, Father, that these things are not desi designed to put fear in them, but faith, that they may be strong in faith. They may know what to expect in the future and be strong and be prepared for a wise man sees trouble coming and avoids it, but the foolish pass on and are punished. We thank you, mighty Father, that you have not put, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you begin to lead your people to prepare for the last days and to teach them how to prepare their children for the last days, that we may be in the world indeed, but not of this the world. world. I pray, mighty Father, that those that are addicted to various addictions, ranging from sexual immorality to, to drugs or alcohol or to any kind of oppression of the devil. Mighty Father, we pray right now that you destroy those addictions. You destroy masturbation. You destroy every kind of curse. We, we come against that spirit of divorce. We destroy divorce in the name of Jesus. We destroy every witchcraft spell of ignorance or of laziness or of oppression or of depression. We annihilate depression. We cast you away from the children of God and declare freedom. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. indeed. We pray, mighty Father, that you bless your people with wisdom, with understanding, with ideas of how they can settle and be strong in these last days as we await the coming of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We pray, mighty Father, that you deliver them from false prophets, from false teachers, from false doctrine, and that you endue them with power from on high, that you fill them with the wisdom and the knowledge of your word and put a hunger in them to study and research for themselves, that they will not have to be taught by others all the time, that now they will begin to do the teaching. I pray that you strengthen your children, mighty Father, for the days to come. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 I love you so much. Be blessed, yes. Mama Maisha. Yeah, and Daddy, Daddy Maisha is in the building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Be safe. Be strong. Rebecca served Satan for 18 years. After her deliverance through the Lord Jesus Christ, she traveled throughout Uganda ministering and testifying of her experiences in churches, schools, and at any gathering of people where she could speak. One day after ministering in a Ugandan village called Mitiana, they had an accident while riding on a small motorbike after a crusade. Erica's wounds were so deep that she died. Erica explains what she saw after she passed. She describes heaven, some of the different levels, and how she entered into that glorious place. She describes the angel of death, his operations, and the inner workings of the kingdom of darkness. Download this book and bring fires of revival back into your life. From life is spiritual ministries.org. God bless you. You reign forever, your name is ever great. You are the holy.